Hi, this is Brian Klug with Anantec, and what we're looking at right now is the Motorola Droid X2. <clears throat> so obviously, we're showing off the Motorola Droid X2 next to its um, predecessor, the Motorola Droid X. Uh, but I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to tell which one is the Droid X2 and which one is the Droid X. Um, so if you take a look at them, you know, side by side, they're exactly the same size, <clears throat> literally exactly, and the same weight. Um, so you basically all the button placement is still the same. You still have the power button at the top, uh, headset jack, a secondary microphone for noise cancellation. But when you get to this side, oh, something's different. So you have the volume volume rocker, uh, but what's missing on the X2, which is of course this one that's a little bit darker, is the uh, shutter button. So there's no more any you know two-step camera button, which is a little bit of a disappointment considering um, how much how much of a fuss Motorola made over that. Uh, the first time around, and it was it was indeed ha handy to have because uh, you could hold it down and immediately get into the camera. On the bottom, of course, nothing's really different. Uh, and back to this side, if you look at the back, I guess that's the uh, other place where really you can tell the Droid X2 apart from its predecessor. Of course, the X2 has you know red X2 written on it. Um, again, it's a little bit darker. You know, it's kind of a black, whereas the other one was kind of a gray. Um, and I'm not entirely sure whether, you know, how much of that is actually just the fact that the X that I have is a little bit used and old and it might have faded. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a substantial difference, difference. You still have the same 8 megapixel camera. Actually, the module has changed. Um, and if you look at the cameras up close, let's see if we can get it to focus. Um, you can tell that the aperture is different too. So the X2 uh, is on the right, the X is on the left. A little bit smaller aperture, so obviously a higher f number on the left. Um, and as you know, as you, if you read the review, you'll also be able to get you know a, a better impression for just how much the camera quality has changed um, for the better, really, in the X2. Um, and that shutter is gone as well. I don't know if you remember that we had a video last year of the uh, the X kind of doing its shutter dance. You know, there's a little mechanical shutter in there. Um, still do LED flash, still 8 megapixel, but obviously it's not just megapixels that matter. Still have the speakerphone port at the bottom. Unfortunately, the X2 speakerphone is not quite as loud. Um, and then a second microphone for um, noise cancellation and some DSP that they do uh, when you're recording videos. Uh, if you take the battery cover off, I mean, it's amazing. Literally, it's the same phone. Uh, it's right down to the battery, so you can tell it's still using the BH5X battery, which is 5.6 to 5.7 watt hours. Um, same place for the micro SD card slot. Both of them come with eight gigs. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. There's really nothing physically changed with the X2, other than again the fact that you know, at least on the exterior, it's missing the camera button and it's darker. Of course, the uh, the big difference. Uh, is that the Droid X2 now has Tegra 2, a Tegra 2 SoC, so 1 GHz Tegra 2 as opposed to 1 GHz OMAC 3630. Um, so it's a lot faster. Let's see if I can unlock them. And uh, also it has a QHD screen. So the, the phone on the right is again the Droid X2. It has a QHD screen. It has an RGBW subpixel layout. Uh, so what that means is that in addition to the three primary colors, there's a white subpixel. Um, and that, that gives you a power saving sometimes, it can also give you um, a big brightness savings because, you know, obviously having a white subpixel results in more throughput. Um, not sure if you can tell a difference here, but there's also a little bit of a white balance thing. Uh, Droid X2's display is a little bit cooler. I measured around like 7500K. Uh, of course the Droid X, uh, I believe, was closer to D65, so, you know, a little bit warmer. Um, not too much of an issue. Uh, really, the big thing for me is that the extra subpixels uh, give you a substantial benefit if you go inside, you know, menus. Uh, you can obviously see, look at just the uh, the amount. There's so much more stuff that we can populate in the the menu uh, with higher resolution um, than we than we could before. And really, all this has done is just spoil me, at least, uh, because now text just looks ridiculous and huge on. Um, FWVGA or WVGA devices. Uh, so I think oh, that's also another interesting point. So the Droid X, or I guess Motorola's phones in general, 
have tried to stick to 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so FW VGA, which is 854 by 480. Um, and really, the QHD is still uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio doesn't change. I guess that sort of paid off for Motorola um, to always be that, that sort of lone partner doing um, FW VGA as opposed to just W VGA. But, but I digress. Uh, anyways, on the front, obviously, none of the buttons are changed at all. This is still the same layout. Uh, all the notification LEDs are still the same. Um, really, in the hands, it still feels the same. There's still metal on the side here. Uh, that's sort of plastic at the top and bottom. Uh, if you like the original Droid X, you're just going to like the X2. Uh, it's, I mean, it's exactly the same. Uh, so, of course, the Droid X that I have on the left has been updated to Android 2.3.3. So we, we're kind of in the same position that we were before where the, uh, the other previous phone actually is running a newer version of the, so of the Android software. Last time around it was that the Motorola Droid uh, was running 2.2 or the Droid X was coming out with 2.1. Um, so I, I'm sure the X2 will get its update in due time, but just something to note. Um, what else is there to show? We still have Moto Blur. Uh, which you can see here, you know, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit annoying sometimes, uh, but I mean, really, it just boils down to being a bunch of widgets, uh, and of course, they resize, so you can do things like this, and then you know, drag them. It won't let me go there. So some widgets can go in one direction or another direction. Um, this widget you can also make really small, just like that, uh, and then you know, obviously, there are more Motorola widgets, of course. Uh, so you know, like I can toggle GPS and have a second one there. Drag it up. Other, the other thing, of course, is the application launcher. But I mean, again, this is sort of shared with the original Droid X. Uh, so, of course, the uh, application launcher is a little bit unique. You can sort things by, you know, recent, recently launched, downloaded. Um, you can also change the order, you know, and sort by how frequently they're used, uh, etc. So, I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's just, you know, I don't know how much how much it's worth going over all the moto blur intricacies you know just just because it's essentially the same as it's always been um, so yeah that's that uh, if you go back into the camera I don't think you can really notice this but really my only chief complaint with having that camera button missing is that it's a little bit hard sometimes to actually tap on tap on the, the shutter button correctly. If, if you're not exactly on it, uh, you'll just pop up this menu. So like if I come and just tap, you know, like I'm in a hurry, I'm trying to tap the camera button, you know, that's kind of easy. That's an easy mistake to make. It's just a little bit frustrating. And also, you know, previously with the two-stage button, you could, you could just autofocus immediately. Um, here, if you hold this down, that sort of does the same thing. Really, it wants to autofocus by, you know, just detecting that the scene has changed and then doing its routine again, uh, which is slightly less desirable. However, camera quality is much better. Um, you can shoot 720p video. If we switch to video mode. Uh, of course, Tegra 2 could do 1080p encodes at baseline, um, but it, it makes more sense, I guess, to do you know 720p at high resolution than 1080p, just so that we can say we do it. Uh, one of the weird things I noticed originally was that recording on the the built-in micro SD card uh, resulted in lots of of skipping. So if you come in here and you change it to internal phone storage, it works fine. I changed the card out, uh, and then I was able to record just fine without any uh, stuttering. Um, I don't think you'll see it here, but before, what would happen is literally just the uh, the display would sort of pause, uh, and then obviously when you came back to the video, you would literally just get a couple seconds of, of drop frames. Uh, so that's very disappointing. And you know, I searched around and saw that other people had that problem as well. Um, one thing that when you're in video recording, it doesn't seem like it always wants to do its autofocus. You know, it's supposed to have continual autofocus, and it sort of does, but it doesn't always, you know, totally kick in. Okay. So obviously the next big difference uh, between the Droid X and the Droid X2 is the inclusion of a dual core SoC. So as I mentioned earlier in the Droid X we had a 1GHz OMAP 3630 which is a Cortex A8 
and one gigahertz with uh, PowerVR SGX 530 graphics. Uh, and then in the Droid X2, we have um, one gigahertz um, Tegra 2, which is of course dual core uh, Cortex A9 with uh, GeForce graphics. Um, so I, you know, we we're still working on our page page load test a little bit, but I'd like to show off just how how fast the um, actual page rendering and loading is. Uh, but just by loading the Anantec home page. So we're connected over Wi-Fi right now, um, which is in the room next door, so we're really close. Uh, and what we're, I've already cleared the caches, so we're just gonna load things up here and see how fast they go. Um, and of course, there's a difference in screen resolution. The um, Droid X2 has, has a higher resolution screen, so that looked really close, but um, the Droid X2 definitely won. But the Droid X was loading pretty fast there, uh, and both of them have flash turned on as well. So let's let's try loading the um, the Lano HTPC perspective piece, and wow, that's just definitely a noticeable a noticeable difference there. And the Droid X on the left is is completely wiped from stock, uh, running Android 2.3, so it even has a little bit of an advantage on the browser. Um, but obviously, Tiger 2 is just destroying that you know single core SoC. Let's try loading the sensation piece. A little bit closer this time. Oh, that, that was pretty close. But um, looks like the X2 did win. I don't know if we can actually. Uh, let's let something else. Let's go back to motherboards. I'm not tapping them at the same time. Let's just see if we can get in there. Let's load the Lano motherboard piece. Come on. All right. After it finishes. So yeah, I mean, obviously you can tell right now I'm just kind of waiting a lot more than I normally would have to. There we go. So again, I've completely cleared the caches. It's just going way faster on the X2. So I, th I think that definitely shows off how much different things are. Um, you know, we can obviously also run other other things to show the difference in 3D performance. Um, you know, like base mark, we could try. So now we're in um, Basemark ES 2.0, uh, which is a 3D benchmarking utility by Rightware. So I'm trying to launch the. I actually did before, but it was taking a while, little while to load. So this is running at VGA. So as a result, you can see the difference in resolution between the two. Um, we're not running running at full screen, so we get a much more comparable, you know, sort of experience here. This is the Taiji test. So you, you can obviously see that Tegra 2 has much better performance than sort of SGX 530, which is kind of an unfair comparison. Um, as we've gone over before, sort of Tegra 2's SOC, I mean, Tegra 2's GPU is probably close, close, closest analogy is an SGX 540. So I think that test is done on the top. We'll wait for the bottom one. So I think that pretty much sums up the um, the performance difference. I mean, of course, we could do things like launch uh, different applications, you know, like the market or something. Um, maybe look at maps, uh, but really, that that's going to kind of tell the same story. Um, if you come into you know applications, you can sort of see a difference in smoothness. Isn't super huge. Um, if we come back here and we just kind of scroll around, you can you can definitely see that difference. You know, whereas the X is just a little bit more choppy sometimes, like right there. Um, and it's even running at a lower resolution. So, I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge thing, but it's definitely a noticeable performance in, improvement with the X2. And if you're in the market for, you know, another a replacement thing, a replacement smartphone for your X, or um, you, want, you want a Verizon phone, but you don't really care about LTE, um, then I think the X2 is definitely something to take a look at. Um, of course, like I said, the uh, X2 does not have LTE, um, but again, that's not that's not a huge deal if you're not if you're not in an LTE coverage area. So thanks again.